With our solar panel all installed, it's time to wire it up, and we have moved our truck inside. One, it's just nicer to work in the shade for this, and two, we really want to get our solar panel out of direct sun because when it's in direct sun, it's generating power, and we're going to be making power connections now, so we want to make sure that we're not getting direct sun on this while we're doing our wiring. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can either move it inside or under a cover, or you can just cover the panel itself. So you can just throw a jacket on it or a uh, trash bag or a blanket, something like that that will just block out the sun while you're working on it. We're gonna go ahead and open up the hood and finish our wiring. So here you can see we've got our lead coming from our solar panel in here. And you can also see that we've removed our insulated cover up here from the inside of the hood. Now we removed our cover when we were doing our vinyl install. And so it's convenient we just left this off um, until we're finished with our solar wire. Uh, if you still have your panel on, you don't have to remove the whole panel. You can just um, loosen one corner of it so that you can get this tucked up here underneath and behind the panel. And so what we're going to do is, uh, what I like to do on the GX is go ahead and just pull this um, good, you know, snug here so that you don't have any extra wire up on top of the hood. And then wrap it up here under this tab. And this tab is uh, part of the connection for our insulated cover. So you just snug that in there and that holds it in place. And then take this wire and run this over here to the hinge. Our battery, our starting battery is over on this side on our truck. And so we're going to run our wire over to this side. You could also run it over to the other side if that's where you want to run it to. We actually have dual battery set up. Um, in our truck, but we want to run it over to this side, uh, to this battery. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this over to this hinge, and then this hinge has a, a kind of a U-shape um, section on it right where it attaches to the truck. And I'm going to tuck this inside that U-shaped section of the, the hood support, and you'll, there's also, you'll find a, a hole that's already drilled there from the factory, so that's real convenient for us. So we're gonna use that hole and we're just gonna take a zip tie. We're gonna run a zip tie through that hole in that hinge. We're gonna wrap that around our cable and then zip tie it in place. So with that zip tied in place, we've now got our cable run from the top of the hood on the outside, up around to the inside, under our insulated cover, down to the hinge, tucked inside the hinge, and now we've got it up here um, in front of the firewall. So what we want to do now is we want to get it from here into the engine bay. And the way I recommend doing that is you'll find that there is a, a rubber, uh, kind of a boot that's along the hood here, and then there's another piece of rubber molding or boot along this side here. Right in between them, there's a gap, and so we're gonna run our wire through that gap. What I like to do is, is if you go ahead on the side piece, just go ahead and give this a tug towards the windshield, just about a quarter inch, and then you can lift it up. You'll see that there's a little, little plastic um, clip hook there that hooks into a hole on the back side of this rubber, and so that allows you to pull this back. Now we can just tuck our, our cable in here, and, um, and then we can take our rubber cover and put that right back in place where it was, hook that little hook over through that hole, and then it's all tucked in here. Now we've got our cable all the way into our engine bay. I recommend running this behind your hood strut here, just so it doesn't get crunched when the hood closes. And so now we've got this tucked behind here, and it's all the way down into our engine bay, and you can figure out where you want to route this up here towards your battery. Um, if you, you know, you may want to just keep it here in the back, you may want to put it up here closer to the battery. What I recommend doing is installing your charge controller right on top of your fuse box. The fuse box sits right behind the battery, and uh, it's great to keep those cables as short as possible between the charge controller and the battery. You could also put it back here um, on the firewall or by the firewall, that's fine too. Um, but you want to keep it um, some distance between it and the engine so it doesn't get too warm. So the charge controller that we ship um, comes like this. You'll see it has this, uh, it's in this box like this. And this may change over time, but for right now, this is the controller that we are shipping at the time we made this video. And the controller, we're going to open this up so you can see what's in here. The controller that's in here is an SRNE 15 amp MPPT charge controller. 
Um, very high quality charge controller, and it is rated for being here in the engine compartment. And that's something if you don't use our controller that you wanna be aware of. If you're gonna put a charge controller in your truck and you're gonna put it in the engine bay, there are only certain charge controllers that are uh, capable of, of running in this environment. There's three things that can damage a controller. Um, one is heat, so you wanna make sure that it's rated to be able to handle the heat that's gonna be under the, in the, around the engine. Um, two is dust and three is water or moisture. And you wanna make sure that it's rated for both the heat and for um, intrusion. And so this is a, an IP67 rated or IP68 rated uh, controller. Um, these were specially built for us at Trail Power by SRNE with some special features, um, but they are designed to run in this kind of an environment um, in an engine bay. And so um, most are not, so just be aware of that. Okay, so you'll see that uh, on your controller, there are, there are a few wires here. There's actually five little pigtails here. So we have a red and a black, positive and negative. These connect to our solar panel. And then you have a black lead that goes to the negative battery terminal. And then you have a positive lead that goes to a battery terminal. And you'll see that it has an inline fuse in here. And this has a 20 amp fuse that you can replace if you ever need to. And then um, there's one little tail that's sticking out right here, and this is actually a thermometer. And this reads the temperature in the engine compartment around and near the battery. And that's another reason why it's good to have this close to the battery so that you can get accurate temperatures for the battery, because depending on the temperatures, the controller may adjust itself to make sure that it doesn't overcharge or undercharge the battery for the conditions, whether it's too cold or too hot or what have you. Okay, so those are the connections you're gonna see there. Um, there's also a couple indicator lights, some LEDs that are along here um, that will give you some feedback as well. So the last thing you'll find in the box is this right here. And this is a piece of double stick Velcro. And this is to make, make to be able to stick your charge controller to a surface. Um, like I said, I recommend sticking it to the fuse box. Fuse box is right here next to the battery. You have this open space right here and um, you have enough wire lead that if you need to open your fuse box, you can without even removing your charge controller, you can just lift that up. Um, but with the Velcro, you can, it makes it easy to also be able to pull that off if you really wanna remove the charge controller from the fuse box. And so we've included that there. What I recommend for putting this on is get some mesopropyl alcohol and make sure you clean the backside of this to remove any kind of uh, manufacturing oils or anything that are on here. Um, and also um, do the same, clean the top of your fuse box lid or your firewall, wherever you're gonna stick that. Um, but I do recommend the fuse box lid is, a, is the, the best place to put that. So make sure you clean those both off, then stick um, peel off one side of this, stick it to the back of your charge controller, and then peel the other side off and stick that down to your fuse box, okay? So you'll actually probably stick it this way. I recommend sticking it this way with your wires coming off um, towards the, the side over here. Okay, so with that stuck down here in this area, um, then we can get onto our wiring. Now, I've got a couple other components here. I've got um, a DC charger for my dual battery setup. I've also got an air compressor here. So you might see a few things here that are, are not uh, on your rig. You may also have some plastic here covering this area that you'll need to remove to be able to get to this area. Um, so that's, that's up to you in your particular circumstance. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stick this down to um, our fuse box is what I recommend. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way. So that'll be stuck down approximately here. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to make our battery connections. Now, if you have the stock battery setup from Lexus, you probably have a couple of terminals here that you can just attach to. Um, you can just loosen up a bolt and um, put, put the positive through the positive and connect that to here. Put the negative onto the negative side and connect that to there. And then you are your gold. So you've got those connections made. And so that's pretty simple. We've gone ahead and pre-wired this for you um, so that um, to make this as simple as possible. Okay, with our battery connections made to our positive and our negative, uh, we can go ahead and tuck those out of the way somewhere. And then um, the last thing we need to do is connect our solar panel. Now, if you look on our charge controller, we already have one light lit up, and that is the light showing the battery. And so you can see that it has voltage going to the battery now. Now we're gonna go ahead and hook our solar panel up. And once again, red to red, black to black, black. They only fit one way, and they'll push, 
and click. Same with the, the negative side, push until you hear that click. There you go. So now we've got our solar panel connected. Now we are parked here inside, so we don't have a lot of sunlight, but we have just a little bit of sunlight coming through this window behind me. And you'll, so you'll see that it recognizes that solar panel connection. And there it is right there. So you can see that we've got um, power coming from our battery. And we also have power coming from our solar panel. So at this point, you are wired and your solar panel um, is generating power. Although in this environment, because we're indoors, it's generating very, very low current. Um, just because it's not direct sunlight. Um, but if we did move outside, you would be charging your battery at this point in time. Okay, so with uh, this point in time, what I would recommend doing is just make sure you get all of your wires um, tucked away real neat and tidy, um, figure out how you want to run those, um, get those zip tied in place, just tidy everything up so everything is, is nice and organized. Make sure you keep your fuse line um, accessible so if you ever need to change this fuse, um, you can, and if you ever find that um, you're not generating uh, charge to your battery that you expected, just check that fuse, make sure that that fuse is, uh, has, has not um, blown for any reason. And uh, that's all there is to doing the, the wiring on this. So we can go ahead and tidy things up. At this point in time, I'd go ahead and I'd um, snap my insulated cover back in. Um, now if you need to um, put that back in place, you're going to need uh, clips like this. Um, these little clips often break. They're, I think they're considered single use from the factory, so you may need to pick some of these up um, and they just uh, snap back in these holes and snap that cover back in place. So with that wired up, the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, program our charge controller. So we'll go ahead and show you how we do that next. So one of the really cool things we're excited to offer you is Bluetooth connectivity with your solar controller. This is something that we had custom built for us by SRNE for Trail Power and for our customers. And so it's not widely available at this point, um, but we're really excited to bring it to you because it brings some really cool functionality to your controller. For one thing, you can monitor your solar output and your battery charging and the state of your battery, but you can also be able to configure the controller and adjust its settings to specifically suit your charging needs. So we're gonna go ahead and do that through our phone today. So we're gonna show you how we do that. I'm using an iPhone, you could also do this through an Android device. So we're gonna go into our app store. This should work on iOS or Android. And you're gonna search for an app called Solar App, S-O-L-A-R-A-P-P, -P, like you see here. And we're gonna go ahead and install that. And so once that gets installed, we'll go ahead into it. So let's get that installed. And now we're gonna open that up. And when that opens up, we want to allow it to connect to our Bluetooth. And so now with the app installed, we need to go in and we need to um, pair it with our controller. So you're gonna go over into device info in the bottom tab. And then once you're in there, you're going to click search device. And when you say do that, you're gonna see devices found. And you see here we have this device that's a BT-TH and then an alphanumeric string there. You're going to select that and you're going to say confirm. And it'll tell you the device is connected. Now with the device connected, we can actually go over to monitoring and we will see that start to connect up to our controller. And then it will start to um, show us our battery condition. And if there's any sun on our panel, it'll also show us current coming in from the panel. Um, currently our, our car is parked in the indoors. And so there is no, there's zero power um, and current coming in from the solar panel. But we can see the voltage of our battery. Our battery is low right now. It's sitting at 11.9 uh, volts. So we'll wanna charge that up. And so this is a really cool way that you guys can monitor not just your panel, but also your battery uh, from your phone or, or tablet. And so we wanna go ahead and we wanna configure this a little bit. So we're gonna go into settings. And now in settings, you'll see that there um, is by default, it is set to a custom pro battery type um, with a 200 amp hour battery and 12 volt um, charging system. And then those are all of the different parameters that are in here that um, can be tweaked to optimize for your specific battery. And we can't offer advice on settings for batteries. That's between you and the manufacturer of your battery. But um, you can look up the, the charging settings for your battery and you can make adjustments here. So if you want to do a custom one, you can come and configure each one of these and then um, you can set this like if we said, well, 
I want this to be custom, but I have a 100 amp hour battery. I could change this to uh, 100 amp hours, and then I can click set. And uh, then it's going to ask me for a password. We will include the password um, with all purchases, but I don't want to include it in this video for the rest of the world. But I'm going to click confirm. And I'm going to enter the password. And if I type that in right, it should say password is correct. Okay, and now it has set that and has programmed my charge controller to um, those specific settings for my battery. Um, if I wanted to go in and pick a standard battery type, I could click user and click um, like sealed for like a standard sealed lead acid battery. And then I could set that. And so now it will be set to uh, a, a standard configuration for uh, optimized for lead acid battery. Likewise, if I wanted to go in and set it for a lithium battery, I could. Now, in my case, I have an AGM battery and it has some specific charging profiles. And I contacted the manufacturer for tech specs on what they wanted those to be. And they provided some of those to me. And so I did tweak some of those um, for my battery and, um, and set that to a custom user profile. Um, and the ones that I didn't know, I just left alone. Um, but anyway, you can do that and you can configure that and set that up as you need to for your battery. And then um, I can go back into monitoring and if the solar panels are connected, I would see power coming in. I can see a record over time of power that has come in uh, to the, to the, through the panel. And so this is a really cool way for you guys to be able to monitor um, the activity going on with your solar panel and under different conditions and uh, different temperatures, different sun conditions, different cloud conditions. Hey, one last thing for you guys before we go, we want to go ahead and bring the vehicle outside so you could get a look at how the charging system of the panels and the alternator and everything show in the monitoring. So you can see that right now we're generating about 36, 37 watts. Uh, we have a lot of cloud cover, so we're not generating a ton of power and the sun is low in the sky, um, but we are generating some. So even with the clouds, we're generating 33 watts and 1.77 amps. It's going directly into charging that battery, which is low. Um, and you can see it's generating about 20 volts. And as we move in and out of clouds, you'll see those numbers fluctuate up and down the current and the voltage uh, and such and the total wattage that's coming into the panel. And this is something that you'll see fluctuate depending on a number of conditions, um, how sunny it is, the sun angle, the time of year, um, the any kind of clouds or haze or pollution will impact that. And also the temperature. If it's super hot out, the panel jet tends to produce less power. Um, if it's really cool out, the panel produces more power. Um, that's just the way that uh, solar panels work. Um, also, you can see our battery voltage. Now here it's showing 13.4 volts. That's because I have the alternator running. The car is started um, because you remember that was at 11.9 volts before. I'm going to go ahead and turn the car off and you'll see that voltage come down now because um, the alternator is not charging anymore. And so that's gonna drop down somewhere down, probably around 12 volts, I'm guessing, um, but it is getting power coming in through the solar charge controller. So yeah, we're up at around 12.3, uh, 12.4 volts. Um, we're at 34 watts of solar, 20 volts coming out of the solar panel. So uh, yeah, this is a really cool way for you guys to be able to monitor not just your solar panel and your charge controller, but also your battery and your alternator, your charging system, and uh, do it all right all from the driver's seat. So super cool, hope you enjoy it. Thanks for taking a look at Trail Power, and we hope you enjoy our products and talk to you guys soon.